What's up guys? Today I'm going to take you on, um, show you this video today of how my plumbing works on this tank. I've been promising this video for a while now and um, I've been getting a lot of emails on uh, how my plumbing actually works in this tank. So we're going to go through exactly where the filtration starts, where it ends, and everything in between basically. Um, so basically here you can see Excuse me guys, I'm sick. Here you can see this is my overflow. All the water overflows into the tank through this weir here into the internal skimmer box here. And then I drilled three holes through the back of the tank. This is the back of the tank here. And then I built this external box here to house all the plumbing. Now I decided to go with a bean animal overflow design for this tank. What that means is it has three potential drains. One of them is a full siphon, one is an emergency line, and the other one is like a Durso style setup that just kind of takes on any extra um, water that if, if say we are starting to clog the full siphon line that one will pick it up before we hit the emergency line and then if all else fails the emergency line will take up um, the water so it's it's a fail safe silent overflow in my opinion <clears throat> this thing is very very quiet it's not you know extremely or I'm sorry it's not 100 percent silent but it is very very quiet so you can see here, let's go back here, that we're overflowing. Why is this not focusing? We're overflowing here. We're going through the holes in the back of the tank here, and we're going into this external overflow box. This is where my water level set here, and I'm pretty soon here, I, I'm trying to find some float switches. I'm going to be putting a float switch inside this here, probably about this level here. Um, that way, if the water, say my emergency line, cannot take up the full um, overflow, like everything is um, clogged, and even if the emergency line gets clogged, uh, once it hits this float switch, it'll trip my return pump to turn off, and then I won't overflow the tank or the overflow box. So let's go ahead and have a look inside this um, external box. All right, guys, we're off the tripod tripod now so excuse any shakiness you can see here is one of the holes draining there's another one there and another one back there that's how we get our water into this external box here now this is my full siphon line here this is handling about 96 percent of the water flow into the sump the middle one is my emergency line so if everything clogs that's going to be my line to hopefully uh, save anything from overflowing. And then in the back here, we just have a normal Durso style setup. Got the hole drilled in the top here. And you can see there, it's barely taking any water in there. This one's taking up the majority. Oops, sorry. Not even, not even on camera. So, from there, we exit this external box and we'll show you that. Alright, sorry, we're gonna have a little bit of glare here. I got the uh, light on the camera here. But this is the full siphon line here and then we come down Oops, there we go. and we start coming down to our pipes. There's three bulkheads. This is um, this is just a brace for the external box here just so it has some extra support. Um, we got three bulkheads behind here for each line obviously and the only one that has a valve on it is the full siphon and I've got a gate valve on here this is so I can adjust um, how much water is being siphoned and also so I can control the water level in the actual box here and then the other two lines are just right behind it I'm not going to be able to get a good camera angle on it and then it goes down all three lines go into the stand right here. So let's go ahead and go around the front of the tank and see what the uh, see what the plumbing looks like inside. Alright so here we are under the tank and you can see the three lines here in the back coming in for the uh, overflow. 
the one right here furthest to the camera's right and it goes right into this bulkhead here is the 100% siphon and then this one over here is the Durso and then that one right there that just splashes into the sump is the emergency I didn't put that one into the sump or anything with any pipe just because if that one ends up <clears throat> having to be used I want it to make a lot of noise that way I know I have a problem <clears throat> Excuse me. so from there we go down into the sump into this drain down chamber here all the way to the left and I made these little bulkheads here just out of some PVC fittings saved me about five bucks and I'm all about saving a dime or whatever it doesn't fucking matter what it is so we go into this drain down chamber here and basically all this does is just catches water and suppresses noise um, and keeps things suspended um, in this chamber because it's a high flow chamber so any detritus that wants to settle at the bottom will not settle at the bottom it suspends itself and goes over this little lip here and into my filter sock area I'm using two, fil two four inch filter socks um, on this sump here you can see a little closer that's them in operation then from there the water is going to go travel underneath this little um, it's not even a divider it's more of um, to keep the filter socks in their area from because then I had longer filter socks and I didn't have a little wall here a retaining wall the filter socks would flip up so that's kind of what this little retaining wall here is for even though I'm not running long filter socks right now anyways the water will go underneath this little retaining wall here and into the skimmer section um, in the skimmer section, I'm running a ASM G3 protein skimmer with a Tunzi Hydrofoamer pump. You guys have seen the video on that. And it is kicking some major butt. It's doing really well. Man, I wish this cold would go away. Um, so that's that. And in the back there, it's not going to get in. I am using a two little fishies Fosban reactor. Currently, right now, just running carbon. Pull back out here. All right, from there we go through our bubble trap. So the water is going to travel under this one here. Travels under, up, and then in to our final stage here, uh, the return section. Then from the return section, we're leaving our return pump. And we're going up to this manifold here, right there. I still got to clean up the manifold a little bit. I haven't really been doing much with the tank, guys. But we go into this manifold here. You can see I got three valves on it, uh, two of which are being used. This one here is feeding the um, two little fishies Fosban reactor. And then this one over here, all the way to the right, is feeding this line here going to the refugium and let's turn on the fuge light here and we'll head over to the fuge and you can see there I got a bulkhead going into the refugium part alright let me turn on the fuge light real quick Modules, channel one turn it on alright should click on there we go what the fuck? all right so we're going to have a little bit of trouble seeing in the fuge here, but that's all right. Um, only because I got my top off container in the way. Actually, right. no, so just... from the return pump, we go up into the manifold. We got one feeding the reactor, and then the one at the far right there is feeding the refugium. And you can see we got just a little bit of surface area, or surface area, surface agitation, and don't really have the uh, Dragon's Beth breath tumbling too much. I got some detritus issues. I got another fitting I'm going to try. I'm going to try this um, like 90 degree Y fitting um, just so I can get all corners and I got a lot of acro frags down in here. So anyways um, just for the time being the way this uh, refugium is running is we're coming down into the bulkhead um, going obviously below the water level here. There you go into this half inch DIY spray bar and that's basically 
what's feeding this uh, refugium. I got a uh, feather duster in there right now and just some mis miscellaneous weird stuff. And I got so many snails and there's so much life already going on into this sump. It's unbelievable. I don't know if I need to zoom in on any of this, but... Oh, the tripod's too loose. So, alright, so we got this feeding the refugium. And then obviously the water comes in here, it gets turbulent, it does what it needs to do through the live rock, filter media, um, through the dragon's breath. Pretty soon we'll be throwing some Calerpa in here and some Catamorpha. And then we exit via two three quarter inch bulkheads. The other bulkhead we can't really see here. Unless I try to get low again here. See the other one in the back there. So we got two bulkheads that come out on 90s into the return pump section right in the way here. Okay, fine. Don't work with me here. So there we come out of the bulkheads right here. Ugh. And then the other one does the same. And I got them dumping behind the uh, return pump just so the return pump doesn't pick up any of the uh, refugium's bubbles. And the turbulence from the refugium keeps the bottom of the return section nice and clear. And then, after all that's said and done, wow, we have issue. Um, after all that's said and done, there. Why is that doing that? It's really odd. Oh, it's because I the tank is trying to top off right now, and I took the top off container out. <laughs> So anyways, so any water that doesn't make it to the reactor or into the refugium ultimately goes back up into the tank and we go out that line there through the back and we go through one of two lines on each end of the tank. We got this one here holding a controller. I put valves on these just in case I need to dial them back through a bulkhead into the tank via the three quarter inch lock line right there now let's go ahead and do a quick test I want to show you guys how uh, the Durso starts up um, we're gonna do a sump view and then I will also do a view in the uh, overflow box section to show you how it works and then I'm gonna tell you a couple of tricks here on how to um, make the bean animal um, thing work best for you because I had some issues with it, when I, with it when I first started it up and I'll go over those here in just a second so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to turn the return pump off and we're going to see the sump fill up let's see if we can't get the best angle we possibly can alright so let's see are you the return pump yes there we go. Now we're going to hear the overflow box is going to draw in a ton of air. And the skimmer is going to probably go nuts. I should probably turn the skimmer off. That was not the skimmer. You're the skimmer. All right. there we go just sucked in all that air and now let's see let me look up at the tank here we're almost completely done draining here there we go we got the bubbles going through the line here so the return lines have soaked in or sucked in pretty much all the water they're gonna suck in I think hold on I might still be draining some here I don't know. Anyway, so let's just say this is all done draining. We're going to turn the return pump back on. And what's going to happen is the Durso is going to take up the majority of the incoming water at first until gravity kind of um, blows all the air out of the line of the full siphon line. So let's go ahead and do that now and we'll see. The Durso will take up...
And there we go. The uh, full siphon line is just about blown all the air out and is now running at a full siphon. Alright guys, so this is honestly the best camera angle I think that's going to be beneficial for this part of the video. And what we're looking at is the full siphon line. I'm going to cut the pump right now. And we're going to see the overflow box empty. And that full siphon line is going to gurgle a bunch of air. Get ready, here it is. There you go, that's pretty much it there until the return lines do the same and also the overflow box is done. Having the WP40s in here really makes the uh, tank kind of slosh back and forth. So anyways, let's turn the pump back on here. Uh, looks like it's still drawing in some... Alright, turn the pump back on now. There we go, let's see, the return lines are not pumping water back in yet. <laughs> the Jable pump starts up real slow. There we go. Alright, there we go, we're pumping water back into the tank now. And you'll see the water level will rise up above this to probably about here and then all of a sudden it'll just blow out all the air and go down to a normal level sitting about midway here on this uh, 90 degree. So here it is, the water's filling up. You'll hear the dirt will start taking in some water. Start hearing all that air. You can see we're not quite up to the emergency line yet, but here pretty soon we'll see the water level drop. There we go. I think I just heard some air blow out there. And there we go, the air just blew out, so now the water level is going to start coming down. And now it's just going to equalize here. midway it looks like I can tighten up the valve a little bit and then it just starts the whole cycle over again so that is oops, sorry so that is the uh, plumbing of this tank guys if you got any more questions please feel free to again ask and I will do my best to get them answered for you all right see you in the next one